Never thought I'd have travelled to Singapore. I actually remember a friend Skyping me at the time, I think back in 2012. They were in Singapore and they said, this is the most incredible place you have to go. I remember at the time thinking, I'm never going to go there. I don't think it's for me. I wanted to step myself up so that I could do what I do from anywhere in the world. I've done a kind of a whole circle with the modelling and that allowed me to travel all over the world. Loads of places that I never thought I'd have gone to. I've set myself up so that travel remains a big part of my life. Welcome to the channel. Tom, my man, marketing guru. He loves to go in places. You've been to Caribbean and I was being very jealous. I remembered that conversation and you kept on showing me the places you've been to, which I'm going to share, if you don't mind, with some of our audiences. So you used to be a model and used to do runways and you've done the whole shebang life circle of modeling before going into focusing more on the marketing side of things. And this is what I loved about your career progression. You've kind of built up on your skill set and you try to enjoy whatever life has to give you, especially the traveling bit, which is the reason why I've started this channel because I wanted to share as much as I can with the audiences and you know I've got my own property management business we do Airbnbs we do booking.coms we do normal tenancies we do everything more or less pretty much anything more to add Tom yeah I, I, good look? I'll stop um, yeah, I, I mean, I've done the kind of the whole circle with the modeling. It was catwalk, commercials, campaigns, photo campaigns, video campaigns. And that allowed me to travel all over the world. Loads of places that I never thought I'd have gone to. Never thought I'd have traveled to Singapore. Didn't think I would really go to South Korea. I actually remember a friend Skyping me at the time, I think back in 2012. They were in Singapore and they said, this is the most incredible place you have to go. And I remember at the time thinking, I'm never going to go there. It's, it's not on my radar. I don't think it's for me. But I've got to be honest, Asia, Southeast Asia was incredible. Absolutely loved it. And that trip to Singapore, also did um, in the same year, did South Korea, did Shanghai, Hong Kong and Beijing and lived between those five over a two year period, really opened my eyes up to wanting to travel. And after I stopped modeling and moved more into the marketing game, I wanted to step myself up so that I could A, work from home. I could B, do what I do from anywhere in the world. And that's really what I've done. I've just spent uh, nearly two weeks in the Bahamas. I was only in the UK for about four weeks before that. I was in LA for a month. I'm here for about three weeks now. I'm going to Miami for two weeks. I'll be back, I think, for about 10 days and then I'm going to LA. These are all business trips. This is all, you know, American business and, and doing business abroad. But I'm able to manage what I do in the UK and, you know, for clients all over the world from wherever I'm situated. I can be on a beach, be by the pool. I've set myself up so that travel remains a big part of my life. Before I move on, do you have a blue steel look? Blue steel? Not for you, Sam. Sorry. You do it better than me, so let's go with that one. Let, let that make the edit. Yeah, he's good. He's good. I recommend. So I've been I've been talking to quite a few of my friends, and the reason why your traveling stands apart from others is because you know you haven't jumped onto the married boat yet, and that makes a difference in terms of how you plan your trips as well, right? So you wouldn't mind going to a remote place where the services maybe there may not be there. You know, you don't mind taking the risk. So let's just touch upon your recent one. The one you really got me jealous. <laughs> the reason why we got into this conversation. The one to the Caribbeans, right? So is there any way you can just share in terms of how you planned your trip, where you ended up staying, or it would be good to share your line of thinking so that the, the users can use that as an execution point in terms of how to plan stuff as well, if they don't like Airbnb or Booking.com? To be honest, it's a little bit more than just Airbnb and Booking.com and exactly where I'm going to stay. Actually, the choice of destination, there's variating factors or mitigating factors as to whether I'll travel there or not. So for example, my most recent trip was to the Bahamas, to Nassau. I traveled on my own i'm fortunate that my sister and her fiance live there he teaches in the school she's a freelancer so in terms of staying in a location i stayed with them they've got a lovely apartment right in the heart of nassau it's a beautiful location that doesn't mean to say i didn't look at properties around and something that i found whilst looking at property in the bahamas online and also that i found with la last year i was there for seven weeks at the beginning of the year is don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with airbnb it's a fantastic service but when you search for a property you often find that the property is a much smaller 
than what is what's advertised because a lot of people use the kind of 0 0.5 zoom out feature on a camera or a phone so you don't get a visual image in your mind from looking at the screen of how big or smaller property is and that that's a massive factor you know you walk into a property that you think is a lot bigger you get then you're like this is not what i booked or, or saw online but also the amenities you know on display are not always true i had a very bad experience with airbnb recently mm -hmm. well last year and one thing i'll tell you for the audience is if you've got amex book with amex because you get amex insurance on every purchase you make and actually by making the booking on amex even though i paid it off straight away hey you get the air miles you get the uh, the avios the added benefit but i was able to get 60 percent back in terms of a refund on the property even though i stayed there for the full duration because the amenities that were listed weren't accurate there was a lot missing they actually said that the property was a double garage property property which it didn't have and the size of it was completely different to what was displayed on Airbnb so just like a little bit of guidance and a little bit of help when you look at a property if you've got Amex or you've got a credit card and you've got credit card insurance book it onto that over travel insurance basically let's do a generic cost check right Exactly. Great. But the other point I was going to make for me, it's always in the back of my mind is how much networking can I do in a new location? Does that open me up to the rest of the Caribbean? Does it open me up to the East Coast of America? Is there something I might find out there that you know isn't available in, in the UK and it's something I can bring to the UK? Or is there you know, something out there that's just pure genius and there's an opportunity? Because I sell on Amazon, one of the mitigating factors is, am I going to be able to call Amazon seller support from the Bahamas? Yes, I can. Therefore, it was an easy decision to go. However, there's some places in the world where I can't make that phone call. So it's, it's a lot harder for me to go and spend time there. So yes, you're right. My my booking process or my thought process is different because I don't have, I'm not married, don't have kids. So I don't have that responsibility. Yes, I'm going to have a fantastic time because the weather's nice. I'm going to stay in a nice property that I've chosen and that I like. But can I work from there? And is there opportunity? Might there be opportunity? Is it worth going there uh, to an unmarked territory that I never thought about before? Who am I going to meet? What's going to come about it? So, yeah. I've had a great tip from someone recently. This came about of my interviews. This couple, again, married couple, a young kid. What they do is they actually go into Google Maps and look at the property from Google Maps, not only from the perspective of Airbnb and the picture they've posted, but they now have a visual representation of what it actually means in terms of going and staying in the property. So one of these couples were going to Mexico and properties looked amazing, swimming pool and everything else. But when the Google Maps kind of came up, it, it just looked a bit congested. What sites do you use, Tom? How do you book the place? One of the things I'll do I'll look on Airbnb, but I will I will type in the property address into Google and it will also come up with other websites where it's listed. So I think I've used Airbnb on multiple occasions. I've had a great experience with them through. Excuse me, I will use that. It's unfortunate enough because of the traveling whilst I was modeling. I've got friends all over the world, so I can always, you know, stay with them if they've got extra rooms. I do like to stay in hotels and some places or apartment hotels uh, just for the convenience of, you know, services they offer um, especially if I'm on my own I'd prefer to be in a, in a hotel or, or a service block so maybe I'll go direct to the real estate company that, that rents out apartments or, or whatnot to be honest that's why I messaged you the other day and said well, I'm in Miami because I'm going there in a few weeks and I'm looking for somewhere so yeah thanks for making me jealous again I'm not going to Miami next week, obviously. So the Caribbean trip, you started your search with Airbnb, you've, you looked through the other option and you decided on this through Google and you booked through Google eventually? Yeah, booked through through Google or direct through Airbnb, whichever platform or website I feel at the time is, is best, that's how I'll book. I'd prefer to have one app, site or platform that I book everything on. I tend to not use booking.com or, or last minute booking or anything like that. But yeah, I, I will always keep my flights separate. Google flights for everything, cheapest rates on an incognito page as well to avoid cookies. I would recommend to viewers if you're booking flights to track your flights through Google, you'll get notifications. Try and book them as late at night as possible. I've kind of moved away from traveling with too many airlines and I only 
only focus on a couple of different airlines now. It's just because these days the experience for me, it's more important. Whereas it didn't used to be. I don't know. It's probably because of my age, probably because of how many places I've been to. But it's just that I tend to stick to very specific airlines these days. But okay, so why did you stay? Is there any way we can share your screen probably just to go through the process in terms of what you filtered for in Airbnb? The way I do it is I'll select my location. I'm not that flexible uh, when I know the location I want to go to. And you know, I know that South Beach, for example, is not where I want to stay. It's a little bit too touristy. Miami Beach, a little bit further up, uh, is nice. I like the idea of Brickell, um, which is the kind of business district in Miami. So that's an area I'd look at. And, and these are different searches that I would put in. And, and what I would do is favorite properties that I like. So they all come under one link. For example, you know, I put in Miami Beach. My dates are my dates 29th to the 11th there's two of us so we'll search for that change the filters so we need two bedrooms we need two bathrooms one bed per room two bathrooms property type doesn't necessarily matter preferably not hotel but doesn't matter obviously wi-fi is important ideally a gym a beachfront would be you know great but i'm not going to put that in because i want to show some of the properties in the other areas it's hot so we don't need a hot tub but we'd love a pool booking options we always put this in we prefer self-check-in we like free cancellation uh, it's not a deal breaker but you know free cancellation on airbnb is typically 48 hours after you book you can cancel for free up to 48 hours and then up to seven days before you only get 50 percent off so some by having that tab on it opens you up to those properties where there's a little bit of leeway we're probably not going to drive because uber's super cheap in america and sometimes we put super host because they are recognized hosts they've had amazing reviews i guess they're they're recognized as the best hosts ideally english again it's not a deal breaker so i won't turn it on on this occasion but preferably english we don't mind french you can see it's showing us 457 properties so once we've done that search and found a whole bunch of properties we favorite them put them in a link and then um although the the dates are slightly different on here these are the properties that we're looking at so you can see on the map there's some in miami beach there's one on the corner of south beach just a little bit further inland and we've got nine properties two super hosts there's more than nine actually there's uh 12 i think maybe three have been added by my business partner who's put this all uh, together on this occasion but you can see we've got a flat in my ami uh, we've got an apartment apartment we've got miami beach this is brickle here or downtown miami brickle over here and essentially what we'll do is just go through them you can only really rely on uh, reviews and photos but we'll look through decide uh which one is right for us which one we think we'll a be able to work out of you know maybe we want a location that's slightly closer to the beach because we want to be able to go to the beach maybe we do want a super host again we're relying on reviews and photos to, to kind of guide us take it with a pinch of salt because sometimes photos aren't accurate and they've been uh, edited but um on this occasion uh Romy, 10 minutes from the beach is i think where we're going to stay so it's close enough to the beach that we can go spend the day there without having to you know trek back to the apartment but within this is the most suitable for us airbnb offers a pay half now and pay half later which for us doesn't matter we'll pay the whole thing in one go but they are adapting to customers who can only afford a certain price now and are waiting till payday for you know to be able to make the next payment so we're happy with how this looks our dates are changing slightly two bedrooms one common space if uh, we want a friend to or we're offering a friend to sleep over we've got a private outdoor pool we've got tv we've got washing units we've got wi-fi yeah 130 reviews 4.75 they look great this is where we'll be very close to the beach here, and we've been told by a few people that it's a great location we're in brickle right in the heart of the business area. It is a business trip. We've got a lot of meetings already booked and that's how we do our bookings on Airbnb. Brilliant. I really like some of the properties there. I wish I was coming though. You are coming. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the Caribbean stuff. Some pictures for us uh, on the on the last Caribbean trip. I know this is the one that's upcoming for you Miami. 
and share. Thank you for sharing the filters you used. Some of the some some tips are amazing, by the way. So this was um, the Caribbean one, and uh, you searched it up on the net, Google, and you. Yeah. So my sister lives in this development, and there was a spare room going. So actually, I, I did everything through her. Obviously, okay. I did my research and had a look at the you know the the clubhouse. It's got a massive pool. It's got communal kind of hangout areas. It's got lovely apartments there. They were built in 2014. This is in Nassau. Yeah. I I did look at a place called the Island House to stay here. Unfortunately, uh, for the dates that I was there, it was a thousand dollars a night, which didn't suit a two week stay. What I will say is that having contacts and having a big network is critical to having an amazing time in a in a location that you're visiting because um, i knew a couple of people that have a membership to the island house it's very similar to soho house i guess the tropical version um sam you'd love it because actually i would sit around this spot every day and the reason i would sit here is because this spot gets the most sun yeah and over here although you won't won't be able to see in the photo but slightly closer this way is the flight path for the international airport in the bahamas and planes are flying in at about 300 feet here they're you know less than half a mile from the runway so you know you're sitting relaxing you're seeing these private jets it's giving you a real good feel factor you know in a lovely location great food and it just makes your holiday a little bit sweeter so this place we went to in cancun literally in the flight flight path we i i stopped eating basically for half an hour or so just watching the planes and stuff plane spotting you know i wouldn't mind doing some island hopping with the probably a small cessna sam all you've got to say is tom let's go and i'm i'm ready whenever okay thank you so much though tom thank you so much for coming but it was so good to have you in the first place and uh anything i should touch base before i let you go yes let your wife and kids know that you are going to miami on the 29th of june that's all <laughs> okay I'll float the idea. <laughs> I, I hope that I hope that makes the cut for the video as well. I'll, I'll end I'll end the video with my blue steel look. Perfect. You've still got it, Sam. You always had it. Take care, buddy. Bye bye. Take care.